as you know, I am doing a nutrition challenge called 12 Diets in 12 Months. I believe that it's important to pursue the understanding of popular diets. One of them is vegetarian. I have a personal history with this because way back in uh, 1992, I read a book by John Robbins called May All Be Fed. And while I am not a full vegetarian, I spent the month of March 2020 eating as a vegetarian. I'm a nutritionist. I'm tracking every bite I eat on an app called Chronometer. It's a terrific way to analyze the nutritional content of your diet. And so that way, it helps me understand what are the nutritional benefits and what are some of the deficits on a vegetarian diet. Most of uh, the people who worry about vegetarian diets are often worried about protein. And we are given that old standby phrase, as long as you get enough variety, you will get enough protein. Well, if you're kind of a middle-of-the-road vegetarian where you might allow eggs or a little bit of dairy, then you're really hedging your bets there for protein. You really have to work hard as a vegan to get your protein, but as a vegetarian, I don't think that is such a big deal. So for my vegetarian diet, I allowed eggs and dairy. So here's what I found. I kicked off this nutrition challenge with a very painful sore throat. I mean, no fever, but it was one of those once every few years kind of sore throat where it just knocks you out. That was the beginning of March. I stayed home. I blogged. I drank tea. I did my workout program, and I showed up, and I got it done. I stuck to my vegetarian diet. And my summary of it is that the vegetarian lifestyle will help you build a salad foundation for good health. Since I allowed dairy and eggs, I found very little difficulty creating an appealing and delicious menu. My husband concurs. I believe that diet is a very personal choice. So if you want to be vegetarian, I think that's awesome. I very much raised my children with the exposure to different kinds of foods, because what you put into your mouth, how you nourish yourself, is your choice. So you should be allowed to make that decision. But over the years, we really probably eat at least 60-70% vegetarian. We enjoy it because we have flavorful recipes, and that is really key. Highlights for me this month is that I was very fortunate to be in New York. My daughter goes to school at Cornell, and so we ate at Moosewood Restaurant, which is right in the heart of Ithaca, New York, and so that was terrific. And one thing that doing this challenge uh, helped me learn was how to crack the greens code because it's really hard to be a vegetarian unless you eat a lot of greens. They're very nutritious. It's a good source of all kinds of iron and calcium. But for me, who doesn't really enjoy a salad every day, it was a little bit hard. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to figure out how to make greens. How do you make collard greens? How do you make Swiss chard? And I have a terrific Swiss shard recipe on my website www.patienttherapies.com i also posted it on my facebook page 12 diets in 12 months it is a simple combination of a rainbow shard olive oil salt and garlic and a little squirt of lemon juice at the end it is knock your socks off amazingly good I cracked it. I cracked the greens code. So that was a really exciting moment for me. I also, because this is my first month, wanted to also emphasize that exercise is a part of how we nourish our bodies because you can put all the healthy food into your body for as long as you want. But if you're not exercising, 
you're not expanding your circulation, you're not getting that blood flow out to every single cell in your body. I mean, technically you are because otherwise the cells wouldn't be alive. But if you exercise, you are pumping that blood out to every single cell of your body. And it gives them just like a bath so that they can get nutrients and they can get rid of some of the waste products that are in there. And your whole body is healthier as a result. So my goal was to run a 5K every month during this challenge. I'm a runner. I ran a marathon in 2016. I enjoy running. And so that is one way that I exercise. And so I ran a 5K. And I ran it in the cold. It's, you know, March is kind of cold here in Michigan. But what was fun is that people dress up when they go to road races, right? Uh, any kind of dressed up character. I've seen people dress up as superheroes, as Gumby. And at this 5k, there was this elderly couple dressed up in shark costumes. It was the most adorable thing ever. So that was, those were some of my highlights. Eating at Moosewood, hanging out with sharks on my 5k run, and cracking the collard green code. All right, so lifestyle impact. Let's talk about that. Uh, you really need to get some great cookbooks because you can have extremely satisfying meals on a vegan diet. Because the focus is on healthy foods, you're not eating junk. So you have good blood sugar control and you have a lot of fiber rich foods which support your microbiome because fiber is the prebiotic where the probiotics grow and the fiber helps keep your blood sugar at a good level so it's well controlled. Uh, vegetarian diet as far as health goes it's a very heart healthy. It lowers the amount of cholesterol because you're not eating animal products. Cholesterol is only found in animal products. I wish people would say that more often. It's only found in animal products. So if you have a cholesterol problem, be a vegetarian and it will solve itself. Do you know that your body makes its own cholesterol? We don't need to eat animals. If you reduce your cholesterol, you reduce your risk for heart attack and stroke. Now, the nurse in me has to present that kind of information. Colon health. It also reduces the risk for colon cancer. That is one of those studied, confirmed, validated over and over and over. Red meat contributes to colon cancer. So there's really no reason to have red meat in your diet, all right? And the final thing I want to say as far as lifestyle goes, if you choose this, you really don't need to go to a specialty grocery store. Now, that being said, I know there are food deserts out there. But for most people, if you have a Kroger or a Meyer, you will be able to find all the foods you need to make your meals on a veg vegetarian diet. All right. Now, what did I miss when I was on a vegetarian diet? I love salmon. I know that I will always probably eat salmon. It is so rich in essential amino acids. It's the omega-3 fatty acids, which have EPA and DHA. They're abundant in fish, especially in salmon. And these omega-3s are critical for our brain development and important building blocks for our hormonal system. So, you know, if you want to put your child on a vegetarian diet, you really need to find sources for omega-3 fatty acids. And um, if you are looking for a vegetarian source of, veg of omega-3s, you need to buy from, I think it's Cytoplan. I sell supplements. You can go to my website, www.patienttherapies.com, sign up. I have a vegetarian source of omega-3s. And I'll tell you what it is. It's actually made from seaweed. We know fish are rich in omega-3s and it's because they eat the seaweed. That's their source of omega-3s. So, 
enterprising companies have realized this and say, hey, we can get omega-3s from this kind of seaweed, and so I can get you connected with a vegetarian source of omega-3s. So if your child is a vegetarian, they will still have those. It'll still be a vegan supplement, and they will have those important building blocks for brain development and hormone systems. I think we all know that there are about seven nutrients that vegetarians kind of have trouble finding. If you rely, I have to say this, if you rely on products that come from a box, because there's all kinds of fake meat analogs out there, you're not going to have the right nutritional balance. If you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you need to make your food at home and you need to work hard at it. So the seven nutrients that are hard to get on a vegetarian diet are calcium, vitamin D, B12, iron, iodine, omega-3s, and then the seventh one is essential amino acids because there are 20 amino acids, 11 of them your body can make, but nine of them have to come from your food but you need to eat a wide variety. So when you hear that statement, you can get enough protein as long as you eat enough variety, it kind of makes me mad because it's kind of a flippant way, like, yeah, we're vegetarian, but we're fine. You really have to work at having the right nutritional balance. Now, if you want to know if you're getting enough essential amino acids, how do you measure that? If you track your nutrition on www.chronometer.com, C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. Now, maybe it's pronounced chronometer, I don't know, but they track all your vitamins, all your minerals, protein, fat, carbohydrates, and, drum roll please, essential amino acids. But if you have a tool that'll measure it, and that also suggests foods that will allow you to get that nutrient in greater quantities, why wouldn't you use it? So if you're vegetarian, I would recommend two weeks, track your food on chronometer.com. The base account is free. It's amazing what you get for that simple base account. If you want to work with a nutritionist on Chronometer, you can pay for the next level, and then you can find yours truly, Rose Patient from Patient Therapies, and we can connect our accounts, and I can look at your data, and I can give you nutrition coaching. There's that if you really want to dig deep into what nutrients you're getting on a vegetarian diet. I talked about the nutrients of concern. Let's let's kind of review those. Calcium. Calcium, most people think they're doing their body good by taking a calcium supplement or a Tums. That's not what you think it is. It's a calcium carbonate form which your body doesn't assimilate. See, this is why you need a nutritionist. You really want to have a form of calcium that is going to be absorbed more readily by your body. Calcium carbonate is what they make chalk out of. Your body is not going to absorb that well. They've studied this. We know that we don't want that form of calcium. I work with Fullscript and that is a company that has a wide variety of supplement products, high quality research supplement products. And so I can get you connected with Bone Up by Gerald Formulas. That calcium supplement is excellent. I think everybody essentially needs a calcium supplement. Typically, these higher end calcium formulas will include not only calcium, but zinc and vitamin D. Now, vitamin B12, that's kind of a tough one to find. But if you take a multivitamin and you want a good multivitamin, not one over-the-counter that's got a lot of dyes and preservatives, you'd be, you'd be astounded at what's in most of the cheap vitamins that are on the market. So they, they put a lot of fillers. Um, they dye them. I've seen women's vitamins that are pink. I mean, you don't need a pink vitamin. You need a good vitamin. So I really believe in Garden of Life. That is what's called a whole food vitamin. 
when you do a whole food vitamin, you're using all, you're not just extracting one little piece out of that plant. The problem with that is you can take the B vitamin out of the plant, but you're also leaving behind all the extra adjuncts and catalysts that come with it that nature naturally puts with it for your body to assimilate. You really want a whole food vitamin, I recommend Garden of Life. I can give you a 10% discount on supplements through my website. It is very competitive and it can be delivered straight to your door. And if you work with me, that takes all the stress out of walking into a vitamin store and trying to figure out what you need to buy. Iodine is can be a problem if you don't use typical table salt that is fortified with iodine. If you're taking a multivitamin by Garden of Life, it will have enough iodine in there for you. Iodine is really important for your thyroid. I could get into that. That's another video. <laughs> iron is another nutrient of concern. Iron is abundant in a lot of vegetarian foods. You can achieve an adequate intake of iron, even if you're a woman, who, of course, we need more iron than men do. I personally don't get involved in iron supplementation because I think that's something that falls under the category of a physician needs to analyze that because you can't assume you're anemic so you need more iron. It could mean more than iron deficiency. So if you're feeling tired and you think you might be low on iron, get it checked out by your doctor first. The biggest challenge that I had on this diet was carving out time to exercise. I had to give up something else if I'm going to fully commit to exercising three, four days a week. And what I realized is that I'm watching television at night and this interfered with me getting enough sleep. So I reduced that amount of time. And then the second thing that I wanna say is that if you're trying to carve out time for something, you have to really want it. You have to really put your mind to it. Mindset makes all the difference. So I decided I was going to work out every day at 11 a.m. and that I would run a 5K every month, and I'm doing it. So I set my mind. Then there's no excuses to be made. I want to share with you 10 of my favorite recipes. Kitchen hacks and key foods. Here's my advice. If you're going to be a vegetarian, do these four things. Take 10 minutes to bag your snacks for the week. Grapes, carrots, nuts. Get a shelf on the refrigerator, which is dedicated to your vegan foods, and everybody else can get whatever else they want, but you know that's your area. And Ziploc bags, grapes, carrots, nuts. If you um, are allowing eggs, make some hard-boiled eggs, and some hummus. Uh, hummus is super, super easy to make at home with garbanzo beans, a.k.a. chickpeas, a little tahini, lemon juice, olive oil. Boom. It's so easy. You need to try it. Number three, I recommend a Pyrex dish, and you put your eggs in there, yogurt, hummus, carrots, celery, grapes, nuts, and cheese. That is going to be a lifesaver for you because you're going to have moments where you're going to eat your tofu scramble for breakfast and you're going to be like, you know, I really am still hungry. So I would recommend eating five times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And because vegan, vegan foods are actually very light in calories, you're going to be hungry. So if you make your Pyrex dish on your shelf in the refrigerator full of 10 different bags of snacks, you are going to succeed. Key foods, this is my fourth hack, key foods, granola, salad greens, olives, raisins, bread, couscous, sea salt, Himalayan sea salt, olive oil, balsamic glaze, bananas, and broccoli. There's really no shortcuts on a vegetarian diet. You need to be in the kitchen, set aside time, set your mind, and you can do it. If you just say, oh, I'll go vegetarian, and you rely on the analogs like fake meats, fake hot dogs, fake cheese, you will stop in about a week because that stuff does not taste good. So if you're trying to make substitutes, it's going to be harder. 
it's going to be easier if you learn how to cook with grains and make great salads and make great stir fries. You don't need any of that other stuff because you'll be more satisfied with your homemade meals, but you got to put in the time. I hope this was helpful. And if you would like some nutrition coaching, I would be happy to help you. I'm going to continue on with this 12 diets and 12 months challenge. The next month is going to be full vegan. I took one month to kind of prep myself for the challenge because I know a vegan month is kind of tough. Um, thank you for listening. And as always, until I see you next time, be kind to yourself.